If they ain't got it, I'ma mask up and take it. 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 How's it going ladies and gentlemen, AJ Good here at the House of Re-Uploads. Some of you guys may have noticed that a few videos from this past week got re-uploaded. Some of you guys really noticed. But one thing's for sure, people cannot read the description of videos. There was a problem with a copyright strike in two or three of those videos and I had to re-upload them. I'm sorry, I added the information in the description and I took out the copyrighted song. So that is why there was a re-upload didn't really think it was that big of a deal. But that's okay, because I'm bringing you guys a new video today. Today we are doing a mask unboxing and conversion. How did they fit a mask into this package? Let's find out. So in that package we have a Morbid Industries officially licensed Volume 3 Clown Mask. The only officially licensed Slipknot mask to not completely suck. And while it is a crappy licensed mask, it's mostly due to the paint job. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it looks like they tried to do an autogram right there on the head. I'm not sure what the fuck is going on. But anyways, we're going to be converting this, so it doesn't really matter. I figured it would be fun to buy a $20 officially licensed mask and see what we could do with it, and help complete my Volume 3 clown set, because this and one more will have it all wrapped up. So real quickly, I'm going to give an overview of the $19 mask that I purchased on eBay show that to you guys up close, then we will get started on the conversion and see what we end up with. Alright, so as you can see here, I threw some bags in there and uh, got it stuffed and displayed, and honestly it's really not a terrible mask. I'm not sure why they decided to make this one not suck, but then make some of the other ones so horrible. And I kind of lied when I said that this was the only one that Morbid Industries put out that wasn't complete garbage, because if I do remember correctly, they also released an Iowa Craig way back in the day. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty certain that you could probably convert that to be a pretty solid Iowa Craig mask. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. Just a crappy paint job with a decent sculpt on a cheap mask, and uh, most of it's going to be covered up anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Still really confused as to what they were trying to accomplish here on the head, but it is what it is so we're gonna get into cutting this thing up and getting it converted and looking right so it can join my others all right so as I mentioned earlier we are getting down to the final couple pieces for this volume 3 clown mask collection with that being said the last ones are kind of weird we did the all black version we are going to be doing the headband version and in today's video we are going to be doing this really weird halfway unwrapped version where he just kind of has black face and then it's all squared in by the bandages I don't know how many shows he wore this or how many different versions of this version he had, but I've got some live photos here from 2005, and that is what we are going to be basing ours off of today. So the first things first, we need to plasti dip the mask, then we are going to be cutting out the head, and then uh, we will start wrapping. After the wrapping, we're going to be doing the blood paint, and that'll pretty much be it. It's a super, super simple mask, but this is probably my favorite variant of the Volume 3 Clowns. There's just something weird about it that I enjoy, so let's get started on a plasti dip montage. <laughs> So the Plasti Dip has been coated over the entire mask, and for some reason, Plasti Dip always on blanks makes them fucking weird, like it just takes shape for them. I don't understand why, but try to fix that when we can, because right now he kind of looks like Grover from the Sesame Street show. Just really fucking stupid looking. As you can see, it just weirdly shaped the back, and maybe that's because it was packed into an envelope for a few days that was the size of playing cards, but I have had this experience with Plasti Dip before. Once we get those bandages on there and get the thing stuffed the correct way, it should be good. But I have had this experience before using Plasti Dip on thin blank masks. Once it's on there, I think it kind of dries to itself and uh, constricts a little bit and kind of makes the mask shape however it wants. But once we get it all bandaged up and uh, stuffed correctly, it should take form. But for right now, we are going to cut the top of the head off and then we will get started on the bandages. The mask is nice and circumcised. We've got the foreskin here. I'll probably give that to a Jewish rabbi of some sort. Don't they eat the foreskin of babies or something like that? I don't know. You don't what want the fuck are you talking about? 
Anyways, we've got the mask cut, and uh, it's actually a big mask, so it doesn't fit me very well at all, but there you go. I'm sure I look like a fucking idiot. And uh, now we're going to put this on a head and start the wrapping process. You don't really want to get into a piece of match with this rap, any rap pack in the Mac in the back of the yak, back pack, rap, rap, yap, 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 yak, yap. All right, so I've just got some generic Band-Aid brand gauze here. I went to Walgreens and just bought what they had left because it was super cheap. Obviously, we have the mask on the foam head now, and I can start rapping. Yep, 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 yep. Looking at these photos, they all appear to be at the same show, although the blood in the bandages uh, looks different in different shots, and I think it's because over the course of the night, as Clown headbanged and sweated and had water running down him from pouring water bottles on him or whatever, it looks like the blood just got washed out, and uh, originally I was going to do the bloody version, but I think that the washed out version is probably my favorite look, so that's what we're going to do, but it doesn't matter yet. Um, I was just saying that the bandages seem to all match uh, how they're placed on the mask so I'm just gonna look at bandage placement for now start the wrap and then when we're done we'll check in and then we can start the paint finish this thing up Okay, so the very last thing that we need to do is add the blood to the bandages and I was deciding between doing the fresh looking version that has a lot of blood spatter left on it, a lot of darker reds, or the worn down version that has barely anything because obviously he had been putting water on his head and head banging and sweating and uh, just kind of watered down the entire thing. I think I really like the look of the watered down version and I think that the lack of blood is going to help it stand out amongst the others that have a very deep red blood. Very condensed on uh, the bandages so we are going to do the watered down version. Took some of my Testor's paint and some acetone and mixed them together and got a nice watery consistency and then any darker spots we can just add a little bit more paint and a little less acetone and get those going so it's going to just be uh, layers of watered down red paint Alright, so the very last thing that I'm going to do is actually an afterthought. Just looking at this on the foam head is kind of silly, so I'm going to paint the black underneath where Clown's face paint would have been. I think that'll set it off just a little bit better, and uh, then we should be done. And I highly doubt this mask will ever leave this head, so I'm just painting it with the mask on there. Alright guys, here we are, all finished. I went ahead and painted the underneath black. This is dry, although it does look wet. I kind of went over it with some Mod Podge and forgot to record that, so I apologize. But I also hit the face with Mod Podge because it gives it just a little more shine, and uh, it'll just dry glossy and kind of look like the mask is wet, kind of how it does in the photos of Clown on stage. But yeah, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I definitely think that it turned out well, especially for a $20 mask and $5 worth of bandages. So I would recommend doing this if you guys are uh, in the route for some cheap Slipknot masks that you can convert yourself. This is super, super simple. As long as you're paying attention to what bandages overlap the other, and you're looking at reference photos of like where the blood spatter is and stuff, you can nail one of these pretty fucking effortlessly. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the worn down blood look. I know that I liked it in the photos, but I'm thinking I may change this in the future and go for a slightly bloodier version. That way there's just a little more to look at. It's not that I'm unhappy with how it turned out by any means. I just think that the blood contrasts and looks pretty rad. But then again, I haven't set it down with my other ones yet, so we'll have to see how it looks down there. But for right now, I'm just going to give you guys some nice overview shots of the mask, and then we will put it with the rest, and I'll show you that. And that'll be today's video. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you later.